In this video, we discuss the requirements related to change control in IETF 16949. So, Niall, what are some of the re relevant requirements related to change control in IETF 16949? Paul, this won't come as a surprise, but obviously change control, change management is a, a crucial topic. And, and we see within the standard, within ITF 16949, the word change or changes crops up um, in excess of 50 times. So it, it's a, a thread that runs throughout the standard. Wow, now that's surprising even for me. I didn't realise <laughs> that many times. Um, what types of change are covered by those requirements then? Yeah, I think when, when we look at the way the standard is structured, we can summarise change into sort of three core categories. One is organisational change, and you could almost think of that as management system change. The second is changes to the facility or the layout. Uh, and then the third type would be technical changes to the product um, or process. Good. So that gives us a good structure to have uh, some conversation about these different types of change. So what do you mean exactly by organisational change? Yes, so that, that really is the, the QMS, the quality management system, um, and to ensure the integrity of that uh, in the event of any plan changes, we need requirements, and it, in this case, it's 6.3 in ISO 9001, which, for example, talks about organisations considering downsizing uh, or if there are planned internal reorganisations before any of those changes are made, risks have to be considered and plans put in place to ensure the integrity of the QMS is maintained. So really kind of focused on the, the business processes and changes to the business processes as a result of it could be downsizing or, uh, or anything else or you know, growing is, is uh, obviously the opposite of that. Yeah, no, and that, and I guess that is a big a big risk at the moment in in COVID times that this could be people forcibly leaving an organisation. Maybe they've decided decided to take retirement. It could be an aging workforce. These all pose massive risks within the supply chain. So we'll explore that subject in a, a separate video. Uh, a little bit later. What about facility or layout change? Yes, so this um, crops up in, in Section 7. So within ITF 16949, Section 7.1.3.1 talks about plant facility and equipment planning. And within that, it includes the statement that methods shall be developed and implemented to evaluate manufacturing feasibility for new products or new operations. Manufacturing feasibility assessment shall include capacity planning. These methods shall also be applicable for evaluating proposed changes to existing operations. So again, it's not just talking about new stuff, which again is, is yeah. change in itself, but it's also looking at feasibility in relation to change management. Right. So this could be where, for example, we're looking at changing the layout of the facility uh, through lean manufacturing principles, I guess. Yeah. Does customer have to be informed of these changes um, by this changes in the organization and the structure or changes in layout. So it, it depends a little bit on on the customer requirements. Um, I always think the default uh, position is, yes, it is a good starting point. So you should assume that customers would need to be involved in any changes. And again, there are a few examples that spring to mind where organizations make changes with the best of intentions, and it might be as a result of um, equipment failure or, or whatever else, and but they don't always involve the customer. So for me, I always think the default should be we we should inform the customer and then kind of work back from there. But yeah, customer specific yeah. requirements yeah. Are, are important to consider in that regard. Yeah, they're certainly key because I think different customers do have different requirements about situations where they're informed of changes in the organization structure, particularly at the senior management level, yeah. or maybe changes within the layout of the facility that could have an impact on quality. Yeah. So what are some of the requirements for changes in the product itself 
or changes in the way that we go about manufacturing a product? Yeah, so <clears throat> the the product itself, we see that in a couple of um, requirements. Within ITF 16949, 7.5.3.2.2 engineering specifications, talks about organizations having a, a documented process for dealing with engineering changes from the customer. And this requires a, a review of the proposed change and if accepted, evidence of when the change is implemented in, in production and updates of any relevant part approval documentation. So yeah, engineering okay, yeah. specifications in, in section seven. Yeah, no, that's, that's interesting. And that would be where the customer is sending to the organization a changes in their engineering specifications, which could be product related yes. and the organization being able to review and decide are those changes uh, feasible? Are they acceptable? Yeah. What yeah. about manufacturing process change then? So this, again, we, we need to move up a, a section into section eight and 8.5.6.1 talks about control of changes. Uh, and this is a supplemental requirement, ITF requirement, which covers management of change in manufacturing. And again, the control over these changes must be included in a documented process uh, and must cover um, an understanding and assessment of the risks in making the proposed change, validating the change before implementation, and obviously, again, informing the customer of the proposed change, again, in line with customer expectations. So that's another example then where really risk-based thinking comes in that yeah. before an organization makes any change in the manufacturing process, that we do risk analysis using tools like FMEA. Yeah. And then finally, what about design change? If the organization is design responsible, how should an organization go about managing those changes? Yeah, so again, for those organizations that are design, product design responsible, this would be covered in clause 8.3.6.1, design and development changes, again, a supplemental requirement and this requires an organization to evaluate the potential impact on fit form function performance and or durability and then validate the changes against customer and internal requirements before implementation and again customer specifics will dictate how customer approval of these changes is is managed and controlled so let's summarize so it's obvious from this discussion that change control is a very important and we could say complex topic within IATF 16949. In summary, there are three main types of changes that are included. Organization change, facility and layout change, and product and process change. We'll explore each of these in more details within this series of videos on change control and include discussion also on the management of temporary change. So let's summarize with the key learning points. Change control requirements in IETF 16949 cover organization change, facility or layout change, and technical changes to the product or the manufacturing process. When we consider change requirements, we must always take into account customer-specific requirements related to change control.